you can't judge a book by its cover, but I'm willing to bet that you do. I know that all of us like to think we're so open-minded and we're so flexible and we're so willing to be uh, open to whatever happens. Maybe we don't. Maybe we know that we have prejudices. But I guarantee each and every one of us, based on our experiences and our past, have predetermined opinions and judgments of different things, including books by their covers, literally books by their covers. This is a relatively new idiom. It only became popular in about 1944 when it and was appeared in a speech in an, the African American Journal. And then in 1946, there was a murder mystery uh, called The Glass Room by Lester Fuller and Edwin Rolfe, I think that uh, made it really, really popular. And people started to say, well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Meaning, you shouldn't assume anything. Why? Because assuming makes what? An ass out of you and me. I love that. I don't remember who thought of that, but whoever came up with assuming and assumptions and the, the acronym for that and, this, and the, what it means it was absolutely brilliant. Now, why I picked this book is because you look at this book and you're like, oh, it's just a little blue book. And then you read the title and you're like, well, that might be interesting. But depending on what you're you're thinking about in your life, it might not be interesting at all. And it's interesting because I actually have four books that are all like super boring. Finally, last year, they got a kind of colorful one about fun. It's a little more fun than these boring books. But these books have actually had a huge impact on my life. Uh, the fun one doesn't look so beat up. I don't know, 2020, I guess I was easy on my journal. But these are little journal books that help me to focus on and overcome a certain challenge every year. Uh, the first year, it was do one thing every day that scares you to stretch my comfort zone. If I looked at this book and thought it's a really boring cover, it is. It's a boring book. And, and I would read the back, which is also very simple. There's like a paragraph on the back. Oh, a unicorn sticker <laughs> or another sticker backwards name and and a few words and you would think well I can't judge this book based on that but what's cool about these books is they're full of activities and challenges every single day there's an activity and a challenge that you can do to change something in your life and so for the last four years this is the fourth year in a row that I have done a video every day to talk about a certain topic and this year's is do one thing every day that centers you which is all about becoming more introspective last year perfect topic was do one thing every day that's fun before that was do one thing every day that makes you happy and then again the original one was do one thing every day that scares you and stretches your comfort zone so these look like little nothing books that you wouldn't really get much value out of but I can't even quantify how much value I've gotten out of all of these books because they have literally caused me to step out of my comfort zone and change my life in ways that I never would have had I not opened the book because I judged in advance, ah, oh, that's a simple, dumb book. I don't even need to look at it. We do the same thing with people and situations and things and ideas. As much as we want to think that we're open-minded, we tend to be fixed in our thinking until something comes along and changes the way we see the world, the way we look at things. Think global pandemic. Last year, more people probably were shaken awake out of their comfort zone and out of their normal way of thinking, at least out of their normal way of being and behaving every single day than in any other, maybe any other time in our history. I, you know, in our history, for sure, in my whole life, nothing like this has ever happened. So we talked a few days ago, I think probably, or within the last 30 or so days about appearances can be deceiving, right? We can, we can, and we do it automatically. We automatically judge everything we see, everything we experience through all of our senses automatically. And we trigger that triggers our emotions and our emotions go into a whole rampage of pulling up memories and pulling up situations and telling us how we need to act in this particular situation. Do we need to run away? Does this person or this situation seem dangerous? Do we need to take action immediately? You know, fight, flight, um, or whatever other automatic response we might have. But those appearances can be deceiving. Have you ever met someone and you thought they were one type of person based on their appearance? Because we make an instant judgment on people. Within like 8 to 15 seconds, we have, we have summed up any individual that we see and we've made all those decisions automatically as to what we, what we think and we've formed an opinion about them. But that can be really deceiving. You know, think about any 
different types of people that you've met and that you thought initially were like, meh, I'm not going to get along with this person. We're so different. Only to discover after about a two or three minute conversation that you absolutely have a ton of things in common and they could be your new best friend. I know that's happened to me on so many occasions. Not that I've automatically consciously judged people and said, ah, there's nothing this person can offer me because I never do that. I figure I can learn something from absolutely every other human being that I come in contact with. And incidentally, so can you, we all can, but we have to be open to that. So in our businesses and in our lives, how do we make sure that we are not quickly judging and assuming incorrectly about people yet protect ourselves and our businesses and our operations and our endeavors and our financial bank accounts, because this has happened to me too by trusting the wrong people, from being attacked or negatively impacted. How do we avoid this? Number one, we do our homework, we do our research. I, I still get horrified when I'm working with somebody that hires people, they just, you know, through the grapevine or they've never met them. and, they, and and in addition to that, they might do a spotty or a five minute phone interview and then hire somebody, yet never do any background, not even, a, it depends on your industry or your business, but any kind of a check to see if the people really are who they say they are. I don't remember, there's some statistic that like 80% of people lie on their resumes. So if you're looking at someone's resume and you're just going based on that and then you're maybe having a short conversation with them and hiring them, that can lead to huge problems and huge trouble. I've never done that. I've hired literally thousands of people throughout my, my decades long career, both in corporate America and, and for running businesses of my own and hiring people for other people. So you learn pretty early on to spot when people aren't being authentic or aren't who they really are. But initially, you don't necessarily do that. You have to remember to do your homework. You have to think and appraise situations and people with not only your emotions and your your gut instinct but with your head your heart and your intuition every time and I've gone back and looked at situations in my life and that's just why I can say this every time I have not made a decision based on all three things my head my intellect my research my doing an, an investigation and finding out information and getting the facts my heart how do I feel about this how do I really feel emotionally? Does this feel like an energetic or a good fit or not? And then my gut, my intuition. So often we we think everything looks good on paper and it does. Somebody seems amazing when we're talking to them and they are because we're all amazing in some ways and kind of not so amazing in others. But you'll get that that inkling, that nudge, that feeling, however it shows up for you and it's different for each of us that says, Eh, there's something off, there's something wrong. Every time I have ignored that, literally every time, something super bad for me has happened in my life. Uh, I could tell the stories of, the, there's three big instances that that really hit home before I learned that lesson, that I have to listen to my head, my heart, and my intuition, not just any one or just any two. I need to make decisions based on all three. And that becomes more automatic with practice, just like any other thing, any other skill or any other muscle we want to strengthen. It becomes really, really easy to use all three automatically once we do it often enough. So curious, what has your experience been with this particular idiom, this expression, this proverb, you can't judge a book by its cover? Has it been true for you? Have you had delightful surprises by making assumptions about uh, a person or a place or a situation or an organization or a job or an opportunity uh, without using your head, your heart, and your gut? Or have you had it go the other way where somebody looks amazing on the surface? They look like, you know, the love of your life or the perfect partner, or the perfect vendor, the perfect supplier, or the perfect person to, to link hands with and do business with, only to find out that there is something in their values that doesn't match yours in terms of how they do business, how they treat other people, etc. So share in the comments below. I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your business right now? And again, I want to say, I don't judge a book by its cover, but like every other human beings, I guarantee that I still have a tendency to do that. 
All right, have an amazing day. I'll be with you tomorrow.